Okay. Looks like they mounted the control. Down here. And a phenomenal air, how about that? <laughs> I don't think much of those. Right there, phenomenal air, that's kind of silly to me, but. Let's see. So the fact is we are the third opinion yet again. That's the second one today I've been to, oops, Linux, quarter inch. This is the second one today we've been to that we are the third opinion. So let me take a look here. Okay, I got some kind of silly light in here too. I guess that's a UV light in the return plenum. Don't know what that's supposed to be doing. <laughs> I guess it is killing germs within that little two foot by two foot area that it's in. But it's certainly not gonna do anything for the air running up and down these ducks at 60 miles per hour anyway. So let's see if we get fan. Um, one of the opinions one of the opinions was the TXV is bad. Another opinion was the fan motor's not working. So I'm just gonna jump it out. It spins free, so I don't see anything wrong with it. And uh, I'm gonna put clip on the G and the R. And give it power. Now I heard a click. Okay. All right, so we hear the relay clicking for the fan motor. And it does appear that all the wires coming from the fan motor are connected. So let's pull the black off. the blue off. <clears throat> and the yellow off, although that yellow is apparently see what that bottom says right there. some reason it is bundled with this red wire. This says fan. Heat. Fan. Okay. So that's a park as well. Okay, so the blue and yellow were on park. And this brown one is on heat. The red one is on fan. And the black one was on cool. So 
So what I'm going to do First, I'm going to make sure what kind of motor this is. It's one of them. Okay. So let's read that with our meter. And I think the one that's clicking would just be this one that says fan. Mm. That top one there. I think that's what would be clicking with the G, you know, call just the green wire. I think you would have to add the yellow to the mix to get the cool speed. All right, so let's get our meter and see if anything is going through this board at all. Yep, we're getting low voltage there. Okay. So that means we should be getting the blower motor running. And we are not. So if we're getting high voltage to the motor, then we know the motor is no good. So here comes our high voltage wires. They're just basically a black and two whites. Let's follow them up this. So that would mean there's more than one black in that bundle. There it goes. There goes that black one. All right, that's 120 volts. And here's the white one. So those two should have 120. When the door switch is in. And they do. So, one of the techs was right. The one that said this blower motor is bad. that is certainly going to cost a few dollars to fix. So anyway, we know we need a fan motor here. There's no doubt about that. 
and we need to model in serial to this furnace. I don't know that that's it. Well, so it's right here on this door. I just don't think it should be on a removable door. I think it should be on the cabinet somewhere, but you know, in here or somewhere, this door is easily removable and lost or whatever, but probably not much chance of that. So I'm sure it'll be okay. And there's your model and your serial, which does match that sticker, by the way. So let's go talk to the customer and find out what we're gonna do here. Yep, it's dual fuel. There's your heat pump. And uh, they were nice enough to pull the plug on her. I just like to hear it run before I go spending time and money putting a fan motor in it. So, Obviously, we can't tell anything about the charge or the valve, but the, the guy that told her the TXV was bad said it was because of frost being on here. And uh, <laughs> then the second guy came and said it was just the blower motor. Okay, compressor sounds okay, fan sounds okay. Now I'm gonna do what they did and flip the disconnect. I'm gonna leave this exactly as we found it until we're actually hired. So I'm gonna tell them that it needs a blower motor and hopefully nothing further, but until we put that in and get it up and running, we can't tell them. Okay, so from Linux, we got the OEM motor. Now, of course, we offered the customer the option of both. Um, you know, we use those evergreen motors as far as replacing most of these goes. And we did offer that, and we offered the OEM replacement motor and the customer has opted to go for the OEM replacement, which is really probably not a lot of difference in this case. Um, this is a Gentech motor here. There is the label to it. And the motor in the unit has this type of connector and so they've given you a wiring harness here that will adapt this motor. As you can see, that's blanked off. So it has these two. So should be plug and play. Let's go find out. All right, let's get it in here. This is a little bit different uh, as far as all the electrical goes. So we got some in and out going here. I guess they're coming in with this and going out with that to feed some of these funky accessories. Remember, it's got that light on in there. It's got that silly phenomenal air ion generator, ozone, whatever you want to call those things. And uh, I'm guessing that's a humidifier. So, Let's pull this and see if everything goes dead. Nope. <laughs> Apparently, our furnace is still hot. Cause I see the green light still on. No switch. I just don't know how that can be. That disconnect must not be anything other than a junction box at this time because it has not killed our power. 
See the green light still on. Let's, uh, let's get in here and see what we got to do. I've got every tool in the world, all nice high-end stuff. And and I'm going to try to do this job sitting right here. So as long as the shaft isn't rusted, I'm going to be able to do it right here with a few little old hand tools. And not have to drag drills and bits and all of that under here. Now, if I end up needing to sand the shaft and fight with it to get it apart and then i'll just take it outside and fix it outside oh wait a minute that light is just that silly thing and that may be powered separately um yeah we're dead here because you see pushing in the door switch does not bring our board on okay so our furnace is Dead, good enough. Let's see, we gotta take this thing out of the way. Linux furnaces are generally pretty easy to work on. So let's see what we can do here. even easier to work on than I gave it credit for because it has these keyhole I mean, I mean that's what I call them is keyholes now I'm going to pull the two plugs off the fan motor screws are in the way to slide the blower out now that I think about it a little further but that's okay let's get the get the bolts out of the blower and get it on out here I guess if I'd have been thinking I could have done a real-time video on this, but I've already paused and turned the camera back off and on once or twice. But... Oh yeah, that shaft is clean. It should come right apart. So I missed that opportunity, but I guess in life you have to accept there's more to it than the real-time video. So. so the only wire that was holding on to us this ground wire right here that's possibly a redundant ground wire but since it's there we'll put it back all right 
they got their funky bracket. Certainly has to be that. Okay. So we'll remember that our wiring was right between these two and headed towards that. Put it back in the right direction. Let's flip it over and see what we got. Look at that. It don't get no better than that. <coughs> it don't get no better than that. See if our 47 in one, yep, there it is. So we pull the bits out of that side. And we've got a three eighths or what looks like a three eighths anyway. Ta-da! Well, that was easy. Just right about back where it was. And unfortunately, tighten this thing back. The old, slow, stupid way. I tell you, I got really lucky and the bolt is not spinning. So I don't know if Linux has done something brilliant right here that holds that head and it feels like they have. It feels like the thing fits down. We'll look at that in a second. And I'll tell you what, they did, they put these they put a little inset where that bolt goes down in there and doesn't spin, so it made that into a one tool. Tell you what, kudos to Linux for that. And 
going to tell you something. That's not something that you very often hear me say is kudos to Linux for anything ever. But I'm a saying it now. How about that? I don't know if I loosen that set bolt far enough for it to go in at any particular position. Obviously, I didn't. Because I just simply did not pay close enough attention. can't tell you how many times I have done this and got in a hurry and slid it back in there without tightening or lining up my set bolt on the shaft and anybody that says they've never ever done that they're either lying or maybe they just hadn't done much but I have managed to forget that before. Now, what I do, as I've said before in other videos, is I don't go dead in the center unless it is an upflow or a downflow. And wherever the motor is, I'll, uh, you know, the, the position of the and wherever the furnace lays, whether it's left or right discharge, I'll put this to where it can account for some bearing wear and some shaft settling. Now, this motor is on the bottom and it's going to wear. This is a right discharge, so it's going to wear down. So I'm going to go in the center first, and then I'm going to shift just a little bit to the top which means as the bearings wear on this motor and it starts to sink, it's got a little bit of room for wear on the bearings. And that's one of those things that like an old Harley shirt that I used to wear said, it said, if I have to explain, you wouldn't understand. And that's kind of one of those things. Okay, I've got it tight in the spot I want it in. Now, let's examine that wiring harness adapter. And try to make it easy on ourselves. when we connect this back.
so that's what we want and this is what they gave us so we're going to use this adapter here thusly <clears throat> Okay, I see the teeth on this kind of designed like a zip tie so that you can take this off and on, apparently. And slide this into place. Yep, in which case, that little design right there, a Mayo Linux, another tiny kudo for that. Now, I'm a train man, so I'm tired of giving Linux credit for doing smart stuff because they normally don't. They normally, and I certainly can't say their failure rate is holding any positive records. But if you're going to have something that's going to fail constantly like Linux does, at least make it easy to work on. And they have achieved that with this furnace. I'll tell you what, as far as putting a board or a motor, transformer, switches, here's your resettable fuse. Now, it doesn't look like it's gonna be real easy. You're gonna have to pull the gas line out to get this motor out, but you know, you gotta give and take when you're trying to make a furnace compact like this one definitely is. So, they did pretty good on this one. Better than the old pulse. And it looks like you have to pull this electrical out of, out of your way. That's not exactly on right. So changing this motor might not be a lot of fun or might not be near as easy as, uh, you know, the board or some of this other stuff. The, the blower compartment, Linux gets an A on that. So here we are at the moment of truth. What's gonna happen when we power this up? Let's find out. All right. Should have brought a jumper with me. It's normally on my belt clip and it's not this time. rats and this is not the kind of door switch that you can easily tape up all right so while linux made it very easy to work on everything in this compartment they also made it very easy to squeeze those and snap this switch out and pull the hot wire and stick it right on the board so we're going to test this thing out, make sure it runs properly in the right direction, and uh, then we'll stick this door switch back in. Simple as that. Okay, so I called the customer on the phone and had them to run the temperature down, and the cool on is flashing. So that means we're in delay. And I'm just going to watch our motor run. And uh, I'll tell you, this hadn't been a bad job. I've been sitting right here in the same spot for you know, 30, 40 minutes it took to get this thing changed. And uh, I'm pretty happy about it. 
So I'm just wanna watch this thing turn and watch it turn in the correct direction. And uh, listening for the click that we were hearing the other day just because I wasn't smart enough to bring a jumper. I guess I could have just twisted myself a jumper off right here, couldn't I? There's a good jumper right there. So, instead of waiting for her delay, I can go to red and green right here. Took it off. going in the right direction a little rattly and noisy I thought but that was just the motor so that's good now I know we have blower I'm gonna lay that jumper right in there for future use well how about I lay it up top that's better so now that I saw that I'm gonna go ahead do what everybody thought I probably wasn't going to do which is put the door switch back on but Easy as it is to take it off and on. Tell you what, I'd rather do anything besides make a trip to the truck. Uh, might have to plug it back in. Anyway. Yep. So now we can put our door back on. We are good to go. At least we're good to go with the blower. Now the other thing we're going to do, obviously, while we're here is uh, wait for the condenser to come on. Hopefully it does do. Check the refrigerant level. Okay. Make sure everything's okay here and that the only thing wrong was the blower motor. So as I told the customer, I couldn't guarantee that till we got it up and running. Boy, sometimes five minutes can seem like an hour. So we're waiting for the delay. Hopefully it comes on in just another minute. Had time to put all the doors back together, door switch on again, powered up, and I think it's been probably at least three minutes. So I just want to hear it run from in here, and then we'll go outside and take a look at the condenser. All right, well, it's running. Sounds pretty smooth. So 
let's take our little handful of toys we had here and go outside and see if the condenser's on yet. Yeah, the disconnect is out. I do hear it humming inside. So let's power it up and see what we get. Hopefully it's in the cool mode as we saw here the other day. It is a dual fuel setup. Oh yeah. We're getting heat right off the bat. So let's let it run a few minutes while we get gauges and see that everything's okay. I think we're done in the crawl space at least.